to it, you'll see hallucinations like creepy Michael Myers-esque mirages or Skinner Man, an imagined enemy who can do you real harm if you're drained of your sanity. This results in some amazing social moments where you shout out a warning about a monster your friends don't see and begin to doubt your own eyes and ears. Only a few games like Dead Space 3 have dabbled in this kind of co-op trickery, and it's awesome. You'll also encounter doppelgangers of your teammates who, if you miss the slight differences in their player name, will shank you if you get too close. That's a fantastic curveball that makes you question whether you can even trust your own comrades. XP earned from completing levels can be spent to permanently unlock a fair selection of upgrades that make the going easier in each level. One of those is your rig, a special ability that lets you do things like stun an enemy with a thrown bomb or see items and enemies through walls with X-ray vision all of which operate via cooldowns and lend some much needed identity and role-based dynamics to your cooperative squad. There's also a number of appealing and helpful passive abilities that can be purchased, which let you do things like slide when sprinting into a crouch or automatically slip free of lesser enemies who manage to grab you. None of these unlockables get around the fact that you'll be repeating the same trials over and over again as you grind to obtain them, but they definitely make the optional tougher versions of each level more doable and give you more interesting options with which to tackle them. The more trials you play as your team improves, the more apparent it becomes that the computer-controlled psychopaths hunting you simply aren't smart enough to pull off the great ideas to which the Outlast Trials aspires. Not only do they often get stuck, they also lose sight of you when they shouldn't and are easy to confuse in very exploitable ways. For example, scrambling over a desk or something to get away from an enemy often leaves them bamboozled as to how to get around the object, giving you ample time to casually stroll away. Even while completely drained of stamina and moving at a snail's pace, I was able to spam crawling over objects to escape, close doors in the faces of befuddled pursuers, and crouch in the dark just a few feet away from someone who should have easily been able to find me. Once you realize the AI's shortcomings, the killer represents more of an annoyance than anything frightening. That doesn't fully end the challenge of the Outlast Trials, because while they may be dumb, they still constantly interrupt your objectives and send you scrambling to the nearest hiding spot. This is especially irritating in one level, where you're supposed to follow water pipes along the wall, ceiling, and floor. It seemed that every time I approached the end of my objective, a monster would creep nearby, forcing me to dart away and hide, losing track of where I was and forcing me to start all over again. Speaking of early access issues, the amount of content available at this stage is pretty limited. There are essentially only three levels, the police station, the fun park, and the orphanage. It does come with a few permutations of each stage that use the same bad guy and setting while changing up the map and objectives a bit, which helps to squeeze just a little bit more variety out of each one. Even so, you're likely to have seen the vast majority of content in just four or five hours. It's especially disappointing that two of the levels, the fun park and the orphanage, share a lot in common, including the big bad that's chasing after you, making them feel way less distinct than the police station. The Outlast Trials is a unique cooperative horror game with a fantastic premise and some really memorable scenarios. But while the early access version proves the concept, there's a lot of work to be done to make those ideas pay off. Running around with friends as you hide from murderous killers and complete utterly insane and sometimes too edgy for their own good death games is paradoxically tense and hilarious. But the fact that the enemy AI is about as effective as a concrete parachute and two of the three levels share too much of the same DNA certainly leaves a lot of room to grow. For more, check out our recent reviews of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Humanity. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Yes. Trap it.